What's up guys, Kara Corey here, and for today's video we are doing something a little bit different. We are doing a get ready with me. I've got a few new makeup items that I wanted to try out. I asked you guys over on Insta Stories if you wanted me to film that, and you did say yes. So you guys are getting a little more makeup side of me today, which is actually one of my favorite things. I really do love makeup. I kind of sprinkle it in here and there on the YouTubes, but today's going to be a full and dedicated video. So if this is not your tea, I understand. But if you guys do like makeup reviews or makeup videos or just kind of like chatty get ready with me's, then be sure to give this video a like. So if you guys want to see how I transform and get this look here using the Too Faced, the brand new Pumpkin Spice palette, a couple other goodies that I have here, then just keep watching and let's get right into it. All right, so starting out, I already did prime my face. Been using the Tarte base tape. This is actually really nice. It's just like really hydrating. It's a hydrating primer. It doesn't really do any pore filling, but sometimes I do both. Today I'm not gonna. And then I swear by this product, you guys. This is the Belief Moisturizing Eye Balm. If you have dry under eyes, if you have aging under your eyes, this just helps hydrate it and I feel like concealer goes on so much better, powders go on better, and I'm just kind of able to camouflage that area a little bit better because of this cream, which I'm almost out of, so I'm going to get more. Um, but I primed my face. We're going to actually start with eyes because I want to share for you guys today this new palette I got for my birthday for my sister, the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice Palette. Like, if that doesn't have Kara written all over it, um, this is a really fun palette, and actually I was more impressed with it when I saw it in person than online. I don't know the colors to me. Just look really pretty. Um, I like that it's very obvious the color stories here too. There's a lot to work with and it's kind of idiot proof almost in terms of the color stories but you can also mix and match a lot too. Um, so yeah, we're going to play around with this today. I don't know exactly what look I'm going to do yet. I have a couple other new things I'm going to share with you guys. The Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer and a couple other things. But since we are going to start with eyes, um, sorry, I know you have to look at my face. You got to look at my face without makeup for a bit. But I'm just going to pin my hair back so it's out of my way. And we are going to prime the eyelids. I've got this Fenty Primer. Not really sure how good it looks. It's an invisible primer, so it doesn't really even cancel out like my veins. But hopefully, it helps the eyeshadow apply a little bit better. So you could just use regular concealer. Obviously, that's usually what I normally do, but I just happened to get this this eye primer. So I'm looking out the window because my I'm facing a window that has no curtains on it right now, and my neighbor is staring at me as I'm talking to myself. So, <laughs> it's just a little bit funny, um, but he knows I do YouTube, so. I'm gonna start with the first color in here, that whipped cream, that's like a whitish kind of color, just to cancel out, I don't know, just to cancel it out, is that why? We're just gonna add a, ba a base. We're gonna add a base. We're gonna add a base to the eyes, and I don't know exactly what color story I want to create yet. I have used this palette a couple times now, and I like it. It's a little bit more colorful, but you can also keep it neutral too, but I think in the sake of not being boring for the video, I'm going to show you guys more of a colored look. I do realize I am a little bit further away from the camera than maybe some other, like, beauty YouTubers, but since I'm not a beauty YouTuber, we ain't gonna pull you in that close. We're gonna keep you at a distance, and I'll let you know what I'm doing here. So, I think I want to go a little bit more purpley. There's kind of this section down, this section down here I'm looking at. This whole corner is a little bit more dark, pinky, purpley. I think we might go that route. I normally like to use, like, tape or something to make things a little more precise. But since I haven't done my face makeup yet, we can be messy and then we're just going to clean it up afterwards. So I'm going to go into this Love You Latte. This is supposed to smell like pumpkin pie. I mean, there's definitely like a little scent there, 
but definitely doesn't smell like pumpkin pie. I'm a little like disappointed in the lack of pumpkin pie scent. So we're gonna go ahead and the way I do eyeshadow is I usually do like both eyes. Like for each step I do one eye then I do the other. I think that's normal, right? I don't know, do people do one full eye then the other? Or is that just makeup YouTubers? Not a clue. We're gonna go in with Love You A Latte and add that to the crease. It's a little bit of a pink purpley. So this is a lot harder than I think people give YouTubers credit for with doing your makeup and talking and having it all set up and doing this in a way so you guys can actually see what I'm doing, I definitely need a lot of work. So if you guys do enjoy these kinds of videos, then let me know. And I probably should get more practice than just doing like, I do like one makeup video a year, I feel like. But honestly, I buy so much makeup. So blend, blend, blend. I guess that's the biggest thing I've learned with eyeshadow is blending enough. And when I watch other YouTubers, they make it look like it's so quick and easy because I don't know, maybe they're that good at it is one thing because they're professionals and they're that good at it. Um, or they're not showing you the full, the full raw footage. You know, things are cut, things are sped up. But for me, that's my biggest thing is like, I never feel like when I'm wearing eyeshadow, if it's not blended enough, I feel like I look like a clown. So. So it's just kind of like a rosy, purpley color. Another little trick that I'll do with eyeshadow, especially if I'm doing like a bolder look, which today is going to be, I'll actually take my cell phone, close my eyes and take a picture to see if things are even, especially if we're like adding different colors, we're not going to just be doing an all over the lid one color situation. So I'll actually take a photo, close my eyes, take a look at how things are looking, if things need to be blended more. But I do have one eye that's always better than the other. This eye right here, when I'm going a little bit over the crease, there's like this spot that makeup does not like to stick to. So I've noticed that no matter how much I try to apply there, it just doesn't stick. And I know I've heard other People complain of that too, so I think that's totally normal that you have like one eye that's better than the other. I got these e.l.f. J. Kissa brushes this summer. It's a whole little brush set. I really, really like these. They apply very nicely. Um, now I'm going to go into Spice of Life, which is that like darker purple shade right there. Again. We are just going with it, you guys, and hoping it works out. So I'm going to apply that more into the corner. Inner corner? No, not inner corner. We're going to apply that in the outer corner. And just kind of pack that on. See what happens. I feel like purples are so much more difficult to actually have them look purple on your eye. So this isn't really a tutorial because I'm not here to give you guys the best advice on makeup. We're just here to have a little fun. So now I'm going to take a clean one and just kind of blend it a bit more. Try to blend the two in together a little bit more. Do you guys do colorful looks with eyeshadow? Because I normally don't. I mean, I work in a hospital, so it looks a little bizarre if I show up to work with purple eyeshadow. I usually do more of a neutral, like I stick to more browns and neutral looks. If I'm wearing any eyeshadow to work at all, I won't do glitter. But on the weekend, it's just kind of like fun for me to play around with color, play around with different like looks. They don't always turn out good, you know? Sometimes it looks better if I'm not wearing any eyeshadow, but I just like the actual process of playing with makeup. I find it very therapeutic and it's just kind of, it's a way for me to be artistic, <laughs> even if I'm not good at it. It's just a way for me to like play around and I do find that very therapeutic to just try different looks. So I feel like that's why every time I do makeup or you guys see me on camera, I have a different look. My outfit looks different, my hair, my makeup, because it's just a form of creativity, you know, individual out, individual, individuality. Is that a word? It's a way to show your own unique style. And my style has always varied. I've always kind of based my style based on my mood. So it's all over the place. It changes day to day. Oh yeah, this stuff 
definitely needs to be blended more. Why did I pick purples to work with? I feel like they're harder to work with. I think I'm gonna go into this warm and cozy color right here and try to like deepen it up a little bit on that outer corner. Ooh, things are looking messy, but we're gonna blend, blend, and then wipe it away. <laughs> I kind of want to create like a little bit of a fall look today, but it is going to be, the eyes are definitely going to be a little bit bolder, a little bit deeper, so maybe this will be more of a nighttime look for you guys. Let's add on some glitter. We've got some fun glittery stuff in here. Um, I'm going to try this PSL and Chill right there. I'm going to first try applying it with a brush and see how that goes. Maybe I'll try with my finger first, actually. Maybe a wettened brush. So I like this shade, but there is a lot of fallout, and I feel like it takes a lot to kind of get the color to really set down. I don't know, I just feel like this one, this PSL and Chill is not applying as great as I'd like it to. Okay, at this point of the look, I look like I got punched in the eyes. And my eyes are already bloodshot to begin with, but I definitely have some of that glitter fallout going into my eyes. But I feel like it still looks pretty. I'm not sure if I want to add any more to it. We might, we might stop here. Let's do the picture test and see how bad the blending is. She needs some work. Needs some work, especially I've got more, I can tell from looking at this photo, it's a little bit darker and deeper on my right eye, which is typically my better eye, so I just need to balance it out with my left eye. I'm going to try wiping a little bit of this away, my micellar cleansing water. Just take it on like a little pad, fold it in half, and then wipe her, wipe her up. Especially if you're going to use the glitters, you're going to want to definitely not do your face first because there's a lot of fallout, I feel like, with this palette. A lot of glitter speckles coming down. So that kind of just creates a sharper look, just kind of taking it and swiping it up like that. Um, either that or use tape, one or the other works. The other thing I got to do is get all this glitter off my finger. I do have a new uh, liner to use, and I don't know if it would work. This is a Kish... Kiss. This is a Kiss Lash Glue Liner, so you basically line your lids with this and then your false lashes should just apply to it, but I don't know if it works without Kiss Lashes. I have some other like dirty lashes here because I like to rewear lashes, but I was thinking we could give this a try, see if it works without Kiss Lashes. I will warn you that I'm not great with the eyeliner, apparently not so great with the eyeshadow either, but let's give it a try, see if it works. So it says before the liner has a chance to dry, immediately apply your false kiss eyelash. These ones are so dirty, I don't know if this is going to work. Let's try. Did that actually just work? That like actually just worked. That's crazy. Shook by that, that that actually worked, especially with just like an old crusty eyelash. So we're gonna go ahead and do the other side. The eyes are looking really dark and kind of intense right now, which is kind of fun. Like it's kind of like a good Halloween look, but I know for me, I always feel weird not having the rest of my full face on. It's kind of hard to know if it's all gonna come together or not. So hopefully it does. But honestly, I just want to say first impressions on this Kiss Lash Glue Liner. Very impressed. Like, the eyelashes went on flawlessly. I was actually using Lily Lashes. I wasn't using Kiss Lashes. So, um, they went on really good. And these are like old crusty lashes too. So, very impressed with this. It's weird though because it says when using it, you're not supposed to apply dry eyelids free of moisture or makeup. Well, I had primer and I had makeup on my eyelids, so I would never wear false lashes and eyeliner if I wasn't wearing eye makeup. For me, that's just not my look, so good to know it still works anyways. And it says, store glue liner vertically capside down to prevent drying out. That's my other thing. I'm interested to see how long this lasts for before it dries out, but 
guys, pretty impressed with that. Pretty impressed with that. So um, I did my eyebrows while I was off camera, which I do have my eyebrows microbladed, but quite honestly, I like a darker look with my eyebrows and I'm a little underwhelmed with how my microblading went this, this year. She, she did a good job, but I like them darker. So I find even though I had them done, it helps give me a little shape. I still go back in and darken them. So I have been using the Brow Microblading Pen. Micro Filling Pen by Benefit. This is a newer pen if you guys haven't seen this. It's got like three little tips on it, if you will. like So you can give yourself the little bit of a, a brush stroke. So that's how I use it, even though I already have like the brush strokes. I just go in and I kind of like fill in and apply a little bit more. Let's actually throw, no we won't do mascara right now because I feel like I'm going to mess everything up. Let's go to the base and I had primed my face. We're going to go ahead and add a glow enhancer because I do use tretinoin which is like a retinol at nighttime and I'm on a stronger dose. So my skin is like this combination of still oil producing with acne but also very dry. So I'm like at this awkward stage where I feel like I have to kind of like fine tune between the glow factor and mattifying my face. But I like this gloomy lotion from L'Oreal. This is the medium glow and it just kind of like adds a nice like all over base. Of course I got like a big thick piece in there. I might need a little bit more but if you just need something quick to grab to like add a little glow to your face, even it out a little bit. This stuff is really pretty. I would say it's comparable to the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Hollywood Filter Young Looking Skin, whatever that's called. This is almost out. I apply it all over the face. You could just use it as a highlight, but I did get a self tan this week. It was my birthday this past week. And so Zoom Tan, I don't know if you guys have Zoom Tan where you are, but they offer like a free birthday spray tan so I was like yeah let me go hook that up so today's the fourth I got it done on the first I guess if you can tell my face is a little bit lighter than the rest of my body um, it's always kind of hard to tell because of my hyperpigmentation my face always looks a little bit darker but I'm not like overall impressed with the color of the spray tan I feel a little underwhelmed with it wow that was really complaining huh I got a free spray tan though so it gave me a little color and it doesn't necessarily match, I don't think, the Pretty Fresh that my sister got me. So this is just a Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. Um, this is in medium 11N, and I think it's a pretty close match. If it doesn't match the rest of my body, we'll just like bronze it up a bit. But the way I usually like to apply stuff is with a brush. I know some people like to use a beauty sponge, but I like to use a brush. All my brushes are pretty clean. I swear, I cleaned them this weekend. This is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe um, foundation brush I really like. And I always just like apply it to my face. And I just dot it, I dot it around. So I think this is kind of an interesting combination that was such a dark eye look. I would probably normally go towards a full coverage foundation moment. So I'm not sure how this is all going to come together for that reason. Um, I do have acne, obviously, and hyperpigmentation, so it can get a little tricky to cover, but lately I just feel like I don't really care that much. If my acne is showing through, if scarring is showing through, I just don't really worry about it that much like I once did. It's not to say like I don't get bummed out, because I do get bummed out about it, but especially with wearing masks and things like that. I just don't want to like clog down my face more with like a really cakey high coverage foundation. I, I like the feel of a lighter coverage makeup, kind of that no makeup makeup look. Now this being a tinted moisturizer, it doesn't have like a full coverage. This is more of just like honestly a light coverage. So you'll be able to still see like all my like stuff still poking through, but I'm not go down the neck a little bit. I am going to add one more layer, see where we get with one more layer. I also have a wet and beauty sponge, so I'm going to go in with that too. I always like to go in with a beauty sponge after I apply it with a brush, in case there's any like brush strokes, but I'll forever be a, a brush girl in terms of foundation. What are you guys? Are you guys beauty sponges or are you brush babes? <laughs> 
So I do have some peeling going on on my face too. So just to give you like a first initial look, obviously this look beyond the fact that it is a little bit light for my body, but you can still see um, my spots kind of poking through. Um, I have more of like a situation over here that's healing up and my chin. No real crazy active breakouts at the moment, but a lot of spots to be covered. So let's try one more, um, one or actually two more pumps of this and see where we, ooh, that was a big pump. What's nice about this is it is really affordable. So if you just need a good tinted moisturizer and you don't have a lot of like spots to cover up like myself, this is a really great option for you guys. And this does have hyaluronic acid in it, but I feel like it's a little bit more of a, a matte finish when I'm looking at my skin, which I don't mind because again, I'm kind of combination right now. So there's the final look with our tinted moisturizer. Again, more of a light coverage. But what we're gonna do to kind of like, hopefully make it blend all together, we're gonna add some concealer and kind of build the coverage a bit. So my favorite concealer is the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. This is the hydrating formula and it is in light ivory. So this is my favorite. I actually really like their original formula too. Um, sometimes I use them both. And I'm going to put a little bit more on just for the fact that I really want to make sure um, everything kind of blends together. We're definitely not going to match my body, <laughs> but that's okay. Wow. That is seriously such full coverage concealer. I have the Dior concealer, um, and that's more of a high-end concealer, I would say. And honestly, it doesn't give me as good of coverage as this e.l.f. one does, so... While I have a lot of high-end makeup, I a lot of times end up preferring my drugstore makeup. Oh, we are so not matching the rest of my body, though. <laughs> Whoopsie. So we are now going to, my next step that I do is I add powder. My absolute favorite powder is this Huda, Huda Beauty powder, and I use it in the pound cake color. It really helps for me conceal my under eyes, which are a problem area of mine, and it doesn't leave that like cakiness. So I always take a little bit on a sponge. I'm just using that same exact sponge, and I pat, pat, pat under my eyes, and then I pull it into any of the spots on my face that tend to get oily or need a little bit more coverage. So even though we use like a tinted moisturizer, this Huda Beauty powder is like I feel like more of a full coverage moment, so this can, should kind of help give us the coverage I need. And I'm going to pull it into the nostrils. My nostrils always get really oily. They're like the first to get oily. Um, if you are someone that has oily skin, I feel like if you use the technique of taking a sponge and really like pushing the powder into your face, it definitely gives you more full coverage, kind of stay all day type of a look. So I'm extra extra and I'm going to use another newer powder that I got. It's, I don't think it's new on the market, but this is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. I don't believe there's talc in this. There is talc in the Huda Beauty. I have to be careful with talc sometimes. It will make me break out. But this is like, uh, what color is this? It's like a tannish. I like doing an all over kind of tannish colored powder moment. And it's got a little glow factor to it too. So I kind of do a combination of everything. I add glow, then I mattify, then I add it back. I do like a little bit of everything. So I'm going to add this powder everywhere else just to set my entire face. Because we're looking a little vampy right now. 1997 Kara with a dog collar on and her Marilyn Manson t-shirt. I would have been all over this. All over this look. I used to throw some black lipstick on. Walk to the local... Uh, homesteads and think I was a badass. So I like this powder because it's like, it's a combo of a glow, but it's not too glowy. Next step that comes in is bronzer. I don't have a new bronzer. I'm always using the Hourglass Luminous Bronze Light and it's just my favorite. It does have a little shimmer to it if you don't like shimmer and I just, I put a lot on there because, ooh, yeah, probably more than I needed to, but we really want to bronze back up my face because I feel like we're looking a little ghostly. So I kind of go heavy into the forehead, into the cheek, 
and down the jaw. So we're just gonna do a combo of that. I'm using this like smaller MAC brush to apply it. Is this bronzing or contouring? What's the difference? Can someone tell me what the difference is? I'm clearly not really a beauty person if I don't know. But I feel like people say they're bronzing or contouring, but doing the same exact thing. So I don't know how to tell the difference. This is what happens when you use retinol. Your face just peels off. Do just a little bit down my nose. Nothing precise at all. There's not a lot that I do that is precise when it comes to my makeup. And honestly, I found it doesn't really matter. Normally like on camera or if I'm doing like a heavier makeup look, like this isn't an everyday look for me, but if I'm doing something like this, it's usually for a photo, photo shoot, or doing a YouTube video of some sort. Uh, coming on cross on camera, it actually looks better when I go a little more intense and messy. Next for blush, I'm gonna do a little bit more of a pinky blush. This is an oldie but a goodie, one of my favorites. This is Buxom. Um, in the color Dolly. It's a primer infused blush, so I do feel like it actually stays stays all day. Blush is usually the first to go, but I do feel like this one kind of... I'm going to go ahead and add that on my cheeks. I do a lot of blush, so I'm adding it. This will help kind of like warm up my face a little bit, too. So go over my nose a little bit. This one does have a little sheen to it as well, which I quite like. Feeling a little dry, so I'm just going to do a little spritz. Feels better, okay. And then I'm just going to take my blending sponge, beauty sponge, whatever it's called, and just go over my face again, too, and kind of like blend everything in together a little bit more. Now, I don't really think I need this step today, but one thing I do like is the Kat Von D shade and like contour palette, um, which I'm like... It looks like a hot mess. That top shade is just like a very light shade. Now that I'm mentioning it, mentioning it I guess we'll add a little, but I'll again take a little on my sponge and just like push it into the under eye area. And I feel like it really brightens it up. If you need a brighter under eye, any areas you want to lighten, you could use that for. I really like it. Did we need it today? Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, next we're going to go in with highlight, which I'm just using an old one. This is the Becca highlighter. It's the collab with Jaclyn Hill in Champagne Pop, which again, this is... It's had better days. It's gotten lots of love, and I feel like I never go through highlight, but I break it, and that's how I go through it. So I just do a little bit on the tippity tip of my nose. Do a little bit on high points in my cheeks, but I've been trying to not go too crazy on the highlight. Just like a little bit goes a long way. All right, and then we are gonna finish up. I wanna finish up the eyes real quick for inner corner highlight. For an inner corner highlight, I could go back to the pumpkin spice palette. There's nothing really here that screams out to me as an inner corner highlight. So what I'm gonna use is the Benefit Cookie Highlight. I'm gonna apply that right in the corner. This is my favorite one to apply for an inner corner highlight. I don't actually like it so much as a highlighter because I feel like it's too intense, but I'm going to put it in the inner corner and, and just drag it up in there a little bit to kind of make it one with the eye makeup because I did save a little bit of room on the very front part of my eyelid to kind of blend it together. Because the eyes are so intense, I just want to do a basic look with my lips, so we are going to do just a lip line moment. I'm going to use the Huda Beauty Trendsetter. Trendsetter Lip Liner. It's a little bit of like a darker, it's a nude, but a little bit of a darker, pinkier nude. I don't try to overline my lips. I try to just line on my actual lips. I don't really want to try to make them look bigger than what they are. I just I do really like the MAC Honey Love lipstick. I have a MAC Prep and Prime. It kind of just seems like a chapstick. But they say it's supposed to help keep your lipstick locked in. I don't know whether or not that's really the case. I'm going to put a little bit of this on, but I think I'm also going to use a gloss. I 
just gotta make sure it's not on my teeth. I feel like this is like kind of my perfect nude combo. The Honey Love lipstick, it is mattifying though. It is a matte, so your lips will get dried out from it. Let's add on a little gloss. I've got, this is a new gloss. It's Buxom and it is Pumpkin Spice Latte, so of course I bought it. So we can have a full pumpkin spice look. Kind of takes away the need to add a matte lipstick, but how do people look cute and apply makeup? Just realized we didn't add any mascara or actually finish the eyes. Let's add a little something under the eyes real quick. I'm going to take a little shadow under the eye. I guess we'll do a little bit of the Spice of Life. That's like the deeper purple color. Actually, let's go into Love You a Latte first. I'm going to take a smaller angled brush and go into Spice of Life and kind of just push that into the under eye. Just to add a little kind of, just to kind of finish the job. I don't do a lot of eyeshadow under the eye. I don't know why. It's just, it's a very bold look to me. But this is a very bold eye look, so I kind of feel like we need to... Actually, I like that. I'm going to take a little of the warm and cozy color, too. I'm going to add that in. Now that that's there, I'm going to take another brush and just kind of buff it, buff it out a little bit. So that it's not so perfect looking. And that it's a little more blended. And actually take it up to the outer V and blend it with the eyeshadow. I didn't do any eyeliner. I guess we could do a little eyeliner. Let's do a little black. I've got a black Ilia pencil here. I'm just going to add that to my bottom waterline. Probably should add it to the top. Last step, we're going to add a little mascara. I'm going to use the NYX On The Rise Volume Lift Mascara. I'm going to use this on my lower lash. I am going to also use it on my falsies too to kind of blend everything together. Alright guys, this is the final look. I feel like it turned out a little more kind of like vampy and sultry for the fall time than like warm and spicy. I feel like this is a little bit more of a nighttime look. Maybe even, you know, for going out to a spooky haunted house, which is one of my favorites this time of year. So um, overall, I really do like the palette. You can create tons of looks with it. Um, I just need to kind of get more practice with it, but I really like it. I like the options there. I do like the tinted moisturizer too. I think this would have been more of a full coverage moment type look, but you can still make it work. And if you're just looking for something lightly to apply to kind of make you feel a little bit more confident, then I think this will be an item you guys will like. And definitely if you're a lash wearer, if you guys wear falsies, then you'll definitely want to pick up this Kiss Lash Glue. That was a total hit for me. I'll definitely use that a lot. But yeah, this conducts my uh, get ready with me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!